This is an NBC News special report. Here's Kristen Welker. Good morning, I'm Kristen Welker. We are coming on the air with breaking news with huge implications for one of the criminal cases against former President Trump. A judge in Georgia just ruled that Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis, who brought Georgia's election interference case against Trump, can stay on the case but with big conditions after a motion was made to disqualify her. It comes following accusations she had an improper relationship with a special prosecutor she hired for the case. Willis and that prosecutor have acknowledged a relationship but denied anything improper. I want to get right to our senior legal correspondent, Laura Jarrett. Laura, there is a lot at play in today's decision. Help us break it down for us. Some tough language in here as well. Some tough language indeed, Kristen. This is not the result that the district attorney, Fonnie Willis, wanted, but it's certainly not the fatal blow that it could have been if Donald Trump and his co-defendant had got their way. So let's remember what the original ask was. The ask was to have the DA removed completely from the case over an alleged ethical conflict of interest of having her boyfriend, Nathan Wade, her then boyfriend, former boyfriend, lead the Trump prosecution. Trump and his co-defendants had alleged that there was a financial entanglement, that the two were taking lavish vacations together, and that that was all while the time that the state was actually paying his salary. That was the conflict that was alleged. The judge in this case this morning saying the defendants did actually not prove an alleged or did not prove an actual conflict of interest from all that financial entanglement. However, the judge is saying there is an appearance of conflict, given how all of this played out, given all of the evidence that came out during the days-long hearing there in Georgia, the judge is saying the DA essentially has two options now, as you laid out, Kristen. She can either remove herself and her entire office from the case completely, which would be a severe blow, or she can remove Nathan Wade from the case, which is perhaps much easier to do, and anybody else could certainly step in his shoes, as opposed to wiping out the entire prosecution team. There is certain language in here that it, I, if I'm the district attorney, I find very troubling. Some of um, the tone that the judge is using, talking about the allegations against her. But there's other language where, in other ways, he sort of exonerates her and says the evidence didn't go as far as Trump and his co-defendant had suggested. But again, bottom line here is the DA now has a choice to make. The indictment stands. It has not been dismissed. But this is going to be a choice for her to make, or it cannot just go on as status quo as normal, Kristen. And, Laura, let's just tick through some of the language here. The accusation was that the district attorney benefited. Let me just say this, guys, before they continue. This is an abs This is absolutely ludicrous. Not only was there enough evidence to show that there was a conflict, a conflict of interest, but even the hiring of him, the, the way he was paid, there were crimes committed during this entire process with Nathan Wade being hired. Not only that, during the actual disqualification hearing, both she and Nathan Wade perjured themselves on the stand. There is more than enough evidence to, to, to have her entire office disqualified. Beyond that, there is more than enough evidence that for this to be appealed, which I am pretty sure that Trump, Trump and his co-defendants are all going to appeal this decision and that will take it to a higher court because it seems in my opinion, that judge McAfee is kicking this down the road because he knows this is going to be appeal. We can see with clear evidence, the investigations that are going on into her dealing, how even the grand jury was conveyed, how he was hired, how he was paid, how she lied to get him paid, how she misused, um, funds, how all, I mean, layers upon layers of crimes have been committed in the process of trying to, um, bring these charges and to try Donald Trump and his co-defendants in this case, there is absolutely no way that this case can continue, um, without there being a lot of repercussions. And even if it was to continue, there is a mountain, a mountain of evidence for this to be appealed. So a lot of people are feeling like, Oh no, I knew this would happen. Oh no it's going to continue the trial guys this trial is over first of all they would have to get another prosecutor no one wanted this but raggedy ass nathan wade in the first place her boo thing and in order for him to take it and and she had to um basically pay him a crazy amount of money 
and give him some booty in order for him to take this case. Not only that, that, that there is no other, the people in her office, we can see that they are incompetent. We see that this office is corrupt. You saw that closing argument that Trump, Trump's lawyers and the, the other Ashley Merchant say out all of these people will destroy this office. And not only if it went to trial, which it is not, but also if it was, if, if they go into a, the appeals process, by that time, Trump, you, we already know Trump is going to be the next president. Joe Biden might be dead by election day. I'm not wishing that on him. I'm not saying that he will be, but the man is, is, I mean, he is one inch away from shady, shady pines. So we already know that this is going nowhere, but this was a cowardly decision to split it like that. And he's hoping, well, I'm still letting her stay on the case, but I am bringing in some type of punishment. There was absolute, not only uh, 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 the appearance of impropriety, but th there was collusion, uh, uh, evidence tampering, perjury, witness tampering, uh, witness intimidation, uh, um, the destruction of evidence, the list, even, we can go on and on, but let's continue with this because you guys know I will go on and on. Financially, from this relationship with Nathan Wade, the top prosecutor, her ex-boyfriend, and the judge ruled the defendants have not presented sufficient evidence indicating that the expenses were not roughly divided evenly. That was really the core of this case, right, Laura? Yes. Trying to establish that link that she somehow benefited financially from this. That, that's exactly right. That, that was the whole sort of crux of it. And they kept pressing that even if they couldn't show an actual conflict, it just smelled funny and it looked bad. And the judge says this, which I think is notable. The district attorney chose to continue supervising and paying Wade while maintaining such a relationship. She further allowed the regular and loose exchange of money between them without any exact or verifiable measure of reconciliation. This lack of a confirmed financial split creates the possibility and appearance that the district attorney benefited. And that's the crux of it, Kirsten. Because of that appearance, that's why he's now giving her this choice to make again. Then she should be taken off. She's committed a crime during, during this case, like with the lead prosecutor that she hired. How in the world can he make this ruling? I don't see how this decision is not overturned on immediate appeal. Between having him removed or removing herself, which obviously she wouldn't want to do. And Laura, finally, just very quickly, big picture here. What does this all mean about when this case may actually go to trial? And is it fair to say this has already delayed any potential trial date. Oh, certainly. This this entire uh, sort of um, this entire sort of debacle has derailed the case for months now. We we all remember the televised hearings that went on for days. There's still no trial date set in this case. Obviously, the district attorney wanted to try it before the election. I would be shocked if that happened. And so this entire sort of um, again sort of de de has derailed a little bit of the case. Again, it's not a fatal blow. The indictment still stands. But this has certainly um, provided a, a problem for her office to now resolve quickly. All right, Laura Jarrett, thank you so much for that and helping us understand this complicated ruling. NBC's Blaine Alexander was first to report the news of the ruling this morning. She joins us now from Atlanta. Blaine, as I'm reading through this court document, I'm struck by some of the language that the judge used. He calls this a tremendous lapse in judgment. He refers to the appearance of impropriety. So he's not removing the DA from the case, but he's not letting her off the hook either. You know what, Kristen, he does not hold back in essentially scolding the DA, kind of basically saying, listen, yes, there is not actual uh, incongruency here, but this does not look good. This looks bad, and he's letting her know that. When we talk, though, about appearances, though, Kristen, I have to kind of break out and just widen out and talk about the fact that not only has this really just dominated this conversation over the past two and a half months, remember, as you and Laura were just discussing, this essentially ground this case here in Georgia to a halt. This is the case that many legal experts were calling the most legally perilous against former President Donald Trump. And for the past two and a half months, none of the facts of the case or anything have been discussed. But in addition to what's happening here at the Fulton County Courthouse, we also have to look at the fact that it has sparked other investigations into this district attorney. We know that just a 
a couple of blocks away, there's a Republican-led state Senate committee, in fact, that's investigating these very allegations. And in fact, the chairman told me that he expects to subpoena Fonnie Willis in the coming weeks to get her to come down and testify at the Capitol. There was a bill that was signed into law by the governor just this week, giving lawmakers oversight over state prosecutors. So even though, yes, this does essentially give Fonnie Willis and her team the green light to continue on this case, with, of course, making the change of removing Nathan Wade from the case, there are so many other ways that this has become sidetracked, and we expect that those will continue uh, in the months to come, uh, Kristen. A couple of other things that I want to point out, though. I've spoken with a source who is familiar with the judge's thinking, and just a little bit of interesting context about the timing of this. This order has been written for more than a week now. That's certainly interesting. He's been tweaking it. He's been fine-tuning it. But that tells me that he made his decision soon after hearing the summation arguments uh, from the attorneys a couple of weeks ago. The other thing, though, that it tells me, of course, all of this is tied to politics. When we look at the ballot. Donald Trump is on the ballot in November, but Fonnie Willis and Judge Scott McAfee are also running for re-election. The judge has drawn a couple of uh, opponents in this case. That happened last week, but the fact that this was written before that shows basically that there was no political kind of leanings in the fact that he has opponents and when he drew this. The other thing that I'm learning is that security was a major factor. Mm. The judge has already received a number of threats against him and against his family. He has two young children. And so why put this out today? The source tells me that that allows for him to put proper security measures in place. He'd been working with the sheriff's office this week to make sure that that security was in place before this order was released, Kristen. Uh, really fascinating, Blaine. The judge, Judge McAfee, in his early 30s, talk a little bit about what you have witnessed in court. Of course, that surprise testimony by Fonnie Willis herself, Nathan Wade taking the stand, Fonnie Willis's father even taking the stand to talk about the fact that the family typically pays for things in cash, and that's why there wouldn't be a more robust written record of the financial transactions between Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade. This really was a spectacle that unraveled there. It absolutely was. I mean, we got into personal details of the district attorney and her relationship with Nathan Wade. We heard about her preference of Grey Goose vodka over wine. I mean, these are things that nobody would have ever would have thought would have entered the conversation when you're talking about the prosecution of Donald Trump. And so, yes, the other thing, of course, the one thing that stands out here in Georgia is that all of this is televised. All of this is playing out on live TV. And so when we talk about that appearance going forward and kind of what that looks like for the case, aside Aside from the legal implications here, certainly that appearance is very, very crucial as well. One important note I want to add about Nathan Wade, Kristen, he's somebody who's been on this from the very beginning. You know, it's very important to remember that he was brought on to lead the special grand jury back in 2022 when they started bringing in witnesses, that eight-month period where you kind of had testimony and the investigative part of all of this. So he really is, some could argue, uh, perhaps one of the more familiar people with the facts of this case. So the fact that he is ostensibly going to have to leave, that's certainly notable as well, con uh, considering his longevity on this case, Kristen. Well, the Trump team's goal was to delay, delay, delay. And in this case, at least, they have been effective at that. Blaine Alexander, incredible job breaking this. So, guys, once again, it on, in, on its appearance, it looks as though Fonnie Willis can, Fanny Pack, big phony Willis can continue her crimes, can continue this corrupt case, that her office can continue as business as usual. But we know this, in my opinion, is a death blow to this entire case because Nate, think of how incompetent this ambulance chaser Nathan Wade is and this is the best that they can get this is the best that they can do and then we saw how incompetent her team is they even said that you you can't use cell phone uh, tower data and, and pinging it and that information that they have used on hundreds if not thousands of cases to prosecute others what they're using in the YSL young thug trial that that cannot be used those are things that are going to have repercussions long term on their case. The how she funded uh, paying Nathan Wade, how she misappropriated funds, how she hid evidence, how she she she's going to be subpoenaed by the state senate. They're doing an inquiry into her there. The governor is enacting laws, and a lot of people say it can't be retroactive, guys. That's only in a criminal thing. 
panels can re act retroactively go through cases and go through these things that you're thinking about criminal law being passed and you can't go back and now you know try to prosecute people from the past that is completely different as they start to comb through the records if they find impropriety by these da's sitting da's um i don't know if it's going to be da's in the past but sitting da's yes they absolutely can uh, investigate and enact punishments for that. I don't know where people are getting, I think you're tying it too much to the court, to, 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 uh, uh, uh criminal, criminal law, but that's not criminal law. This is a, a, a panel. This is a board that is going to do oversight. Okay. So absolutely they can tear her to shreds and remove her from office. Um, based on her conduct, based on her, her past conduct within the office. So, and then we also know the House Judiciary Committee is coming after her. So there are a lot of things. This case will be not only appealed, uh, she's committed crimes, the perjury we saw. This judge absolutely took the coward's way out in order to save himself in a very um, left-leaning demon rat district that we know down there in Fulton County that is very corrupt while he is also a Republican. So it looks like he tried to save some face over there with Republicans because he does have to have, he probably has um, his sights set on a bigger career. But I think this just torched him for any type of thing that he wants to do in the future because he did not take a stand for justice. And we, we, we the people can see plainly with our eyes that this is a miscarriage of justice. We the people can see the crimes that a uh, big fanny pack Willis and her gigolo committed that from the inception, as they even said, from the inception of this case, he was involved. He was involved before they even brought in a grand jury. He's the one that presented the evidence before them. There are so many layers of corruption that we I have detailed over these past few weeks. But guys, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this. I know everybody's gonna be pissed off, but I actually think this is I actually do think that this is a death blow I I think with the, the, her office is so mired and scandal as they said and weighed down there is no way that this is going to go before a, this is actually going to come before a jury anytime before the November election and quite honestly this is a great distraction this is a great target for Donald Trump to campaign on, to talk about the corruption and how they tried to do election interference. I actually see it as a way to boost him, especially in the state of Georgia, so that we know last time Georgia went to Biden. But I actually see that, that this could uh, flip the state back to red because of people's outrage and seeing this blatant, in-their-face corruption, playing in front of the people's face, seeing how she's spent taxpayer dollars. I can see a lot of people flipping in fact um, I'm gonna do a video soon where Donald Trump um, after he was indicted or he was down there and, um, and this was not on the mainstream news he was driving through um, uh, the poor areas where black people live they were standing on the side of the road and cheering for him because a lot of black people have seen that they are coming after him and being persecuted in a lot of ways that black people have felt that they have been and they really they they're seeing beyond the past the bs they see how the media is trying to manipulate them they also see that every four years you have even celebrities stephen a smith charles barkley different black people that have stood up and said we are tired of the demon rats pandering to us every four years with hillary clinton's um uh, hot sauce and she blatantly admitted that she was just pandering for the black vote or Joe Biden buying us uh, fried chicken or saying that if you don't vote for him then you're not black all of these things have added up to where we're not getting any results they care more about these illegal immigrants coming into this country those are the votes they want now they're trying to shut down and, and silence the black community they don't care they never cared about the black community in the first place we see how they're giving benefits millions if not billions of dollars to illegals not to the black people people who have paid taxes. They're taking away um, oh, the funding for different programs. They're taking away their different, their different community programs. They're, they're taking away even their schools in certain demo, demo, demon rat cities in order to fund and pay for these migrants. And if it was up to AOC and her cohort, her cabal really, that they would actually allow these people to come in open hand, pay them, um, pay them money, give them money to live here, uh, give them citizenship and allow them to vote because they know that is the only way that they can gain any new votes and new traction. Young people have abandoned the demon rat party. Black people are abandoning the 
demon rat party. Even Muslims, people are black, black and brown who are actual citizens here have, uh, are, or have begun to abandon them because of their policies, because of the things that they have been doing and seeing how the lies do not add up anymore. People are tired of identity politics. They're tired of playing the race war. They're tired of, of gender wars. They're tired of everything is LGBTQ plus everything is trans. If you're not that, if you don't accept these things, then you're, a, you're something's wrong with you. You're a racist. You're a, some type of phobia. You're something that they put a label on you and you're not allowed to think freely. You even saying illegal immigrants, you have to say undocumented migrants. No, let's call it what it is. Even Joe Biden slipped up and his senile moment when his drug, I guess, slipped and he began in the state of the union address and called the, called them illegals, called them for what they are in today's world. The demon rats want to say that what is good is bad and what is bad is good. And if you do not accept that, we will cancel you. We will destroy you. We will take away everything that you have. Meanwhile, also the economy is, is, is in horrible shape. Joe Biden has the worst approval rate. So all of these things in totality, plus we see this, I see this helping to flip Georgia to red. So guys leave a comment. I'm not discour discouraged by this. I just can't wait to see what <laughs> fake phony, uh, a strong independent black, black mammy, uh, Fannie Willis is going to say about this. And I look forward to seeing if she actually even gets reelected. Um, but yeah, also follow me on social media. The links are below in the description box and I will see you guys on the next one.